Fraction basics. A fraction is a way of representing a part of a whole. We have three basic ways to model a fraction, and we're going to go through all three of those. First, the area or the region models. In the area and region models, a surface is divided into equal parts. Here are some examples. Um, a circle is divided into one half, and we will use manipulatives in class that model this, one the one whole, and then the one half piece. Um, in this one, we have a square that's divided into four equal parts, so one-fourth is shaded in. In the hexagon, you can see that it's divided into six pieces, and two of them are shaded, so we call this fraction two-sixths. We will use pattern blocks like this in class to um, model um, area fractions with, with the hexagon. And finally, when we use the base 10 model of the flat, if you color in nine of those, you could call that nine hundredths because we know that this is broken up into a hundred pieces. It's important to remember when you're talking about the area and region models that all parts must be equal. You would not consider this a good example of a fraction because the parts are not equal sizes and shapes. There are two more models of fractions that we will see in our class. Next is the set model, and in the set model, the whole is a collection of objects, and we're just talking about part of a collection or part of the set. In this example, the whole is five circles, four-fifths, or four out of five of the circles are blue, and one-fifth, or one out of five of the circles are red. Another example are the trees and the flower down here. Three-fourths of the objects are trees, three out of four, and one-fourth of the objects our tree is a flower. Um, in this model, it's easy to see that objects don't have to be equal. The, the trees and the flowers are not equal, unlike the area model. The third model that you need to know is the measurement model. In this uh, model, lengths are compared. You can see here a number line that's marked off in tenths, and um, you can compare one-tenth here to five-tenths or ten-tenths. Um, this is like you've zoomed into a ruler, and a ruler is a really good example of fractions and um, measurement models. And you can see that this would be two and a half inches, for example, if this was an inch ruler. And finally, fraction towers that we will use in class quite frequently are an example of the measurement model, where this, the red, equals one whole, and the parts um, get smaller as the denominator gets bigger. In all of the measurement models, you need to remember that the parts must be equal. Let's talk about the parts of a fraction. There's two important words that we need to know. The denominator tells how many parts are in the whole or the set. So if I take this square and divide it into four parts, I would say that the denominator is four because I've divided it into four equal parts. The numerator tells how many of those parts are being described. So if we shade in one of those four parts, the numerator becomes one, and this fraction is one-fourth. Um, if you have a hard time remembering those words, you, here's two ways that you can think about it. The numerator starts with an N, and that could stand for the number of pieces being described. Also, the numerator has a U in it, and it's up on the top of the fraction. A denominator tells how many pieces the whole is divided into, you see D divided, and de the denominator is down in the fraction. So for example, in this problem, if you see what fraction of the stars are purple, it would always be helpful first to think about the denominator. So you want to think about how many pieces that set is broken into. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six stars, so this is the denominator. And then I want to look at how many of the parts are being described. I'm looking specifically for purple stars, so I'm going to count one, two, three, four, and that becomes my numerator. My numerator is four, and my denominator is six. As we go through our unit in fractions, you'll hear us talk about three different types of fractions, and these are words to keep in mind. The proper, a proper fraction is any fraction where the numerator is less than the denominator. And because of this, the fraction is always going to be less than one if it's a proper fraction. So for example, we have 
three out of four of these um, sections of the circle colored in. This is a proper fraction, and two-fifths would also be a proper fraction. In both examples, the numerator is less than the denominator, and also this is less than one whole. This On the number line, two-fifths is not yet to one whole, which would be five-fifths. An improper fraction, that prefix means the opposite or not, improper fraction is, a new, is when the numerator is greater than the denominator. In these kinds of fractions, the fraction is greater than one. So you can see here that we have two squares. This represents a whole. All of those are colored in, all of those fourths, and one fourth here. So this improper fraction is, you read it as five fourths. Here's another example. For if we had two of the orange fraction towers like this, we would say that one, two, three, four thirds are colored in which because the numerator is bigger than the denominator, it's an improper fraction. Finally, the third kind of fraction that you'll hear about are mixed numbers. Um, a mixed number has two parts, a whole number and a fraction. So we can see here that we've taken these improper fractions and turned them into whole numbers. This 4 fourths is the same as one whole, and so now we read one whole and one fourth, or you just read it as one and one fourth. In this case, we have swapped the three-thirds right here for one whole, and that shows up right here. And now we could read this fraction one and one-third. How are the parts related? If you look at these examples or these models of fraction towers, you can see that the whole has been here divided into two parts, and we call each part a half. In this one, it's been divided into five parts, and the denominator is now five, and we call these fifths. And here we've divided it into ten parts, and the denominator is ten, and we call them tenths. So if you look at the difference, how these parts change as we go down and the denominators get bigger, you would notice that as the denominators get bigger, the parts get smaller. So we have small denominators, big pieces. Here we have big denominators and little pieces. And I want you to remember this when we end up comparing fractions in the future. This will be very helpful. Fractions can also be written as a division statement. This fraction, 1 half, when you read it, you can think 1 divided by 2. So the 1 becomes your dividend, and the 2 becomes your divisor. We've learned that 1 is the same as 1 and 0 tenths, and we can bring the decimal up here and then do the decimal division problem. 2 goes into 10 5 times, so 1 divided by 2 is 5 tenths. I hope that you're seeing the relationship here, that 1 half of a dollar, for example, means that you would split it into two equal parts. Each of those equal parts would be worth 50 cents. So what we've really done is one half is the same as one divided by two, or 50 cents, which is equivalent decimal, decimal to five tenths.